All right, everyone, now we have to talk about Winsome Sears. Of course, she is now the first black lieutenant governor uh, elected in, um, in Virginia. Uh, this was big news on election night, along with Youngkin, of course, carrying it away after McAuliffe had been 10 points almost ahead a month before. Uh, but it got talked about a lot less. Now, part of that is like it's the lieutenant governor's position. While it's prestigious, it's not the gubernatorial race. And with, with Youngkin McAuliffe, you had a lot more coverage of it in the first place because the legacy media expected to run away with the race. Up until a few weeks before the race culminated, they were out ahead far enough that they were like, oh, well, we, we, this is the bellwether for 2022 because they had gave it like a 99% chance for McAuliffe. Then McAuliffe fucks himself. Biden keeps messing up. Whoops. And <laughs> we messed up a little. I thought it was funny that the uh, job growth numbers came out a couple days after the election. I saw scuttlebutt among liberals saying, well, they deliberately withheld it uh, to make Terry McAuliffe lose. He would have won. He would have won if they had put out one good jobs report number before the election. Me thinks not, because <laughs> that went far beyond an economics issue. I think anyone that blames Biden for economic problems already would be well off the Terry McAuliffe bus, and there'd be no chance of him changing their mind. So that's a little bit conspiratorial, but we'll get past it. Uh, here's the thing, link in the description. I keep seeing people on the left like making exactly the wrong decision. They're trying to tokenize Winsome Sears. Of course... She is a black lady. She's also a Republican, which is why they don't want to talk about her too much. She's a gun toter. She's probably a little bit further right than Youngkin, actually. Um, she's a proud, empowered Republican woman who, you know, I, I think has a man, but I'm not sure, and certainly has guns. Um, so they try to tokenize her. It's like, well, yeah, we're sitting here. Uh, they have on, again, link in the description, MSNBC. Whenever they criticize her, they very carefully make sure the anchor and the guest are black. Uh, or, or at least BIPOC or, you know, whatever other racial term they're using these days as a designation. Uh, people of color, which sounds mysteriously like colored people, but we won't get into that argument just now. Why? Because then they can say, well, the real authentic black voices recognize that she's just a plantation wanderer or something. Yeah, it's not really, it doesn't really matter because she still stands for white supremacy because of her particular ideological views. Because as we all know, white supremacy, like 10 years ago, it was all white people. But then they realized outreach was important, and so now there are a bunch of black and Hispanic white supremacists. There are East Asian white supremacists. Oh, fuck. You know, anyone can be a white supremacist now. It has become the most tolerant and diverse apparent political movement in the Western Hemisphere, if you listen to MSNBC. I mean, I know the Ku Klux Klan started allowing Catholics in before their organization petered out entirely. Uh, but I wasn't aware of the fact that they also started welcoming black people. Hey, <laughs> what's your genetic makeup? Well, I'm 50% Moroccan and 50% Indonesian. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, come on in. You don't practice Judaism, do you? Uh, <laughs> seems to be the litmus, the only litmus question that's left. Uh, but more, it's about political views. Literally, a person is converted into whiteness, no matter how black they are, simply by being a Republican, according to a partisan, or being a conservative, according to liberal partisans, uh, or, or being far right on one or more issues. Uh, it doesn't really depend which ones. So, for instance, I am clearly a, a, a supremacist of some sort, an extreme right wing. Why? Because I don't think that there should be gun control, and I'm really tired of my taxes going to bomb third worlders. That's, this is why I'm far right. I don't believe in burning books. This is a extreme conservative value, as we saw throughout the 50s through the uh, 1990s. Um, it doesn't make any sense. So they're trying to tokenize a rather successful woman uh, because she disagrees, but it's not for race. It's for ideology. It's for political. It's really it's about political partisanship. They're ridiculing her and saying, "Well, she's basically trying to be a mammy for the white folk because she didn't join the right party." Try, trying to insinuate that they should be commanding that person and their ideological views. When this happens and it is white people doing it, it is considered to be extremely bigoted. Oh, how dare you speak to for me? Uh, you know, you don't speak for me. And usually on that end, it's it's negativity. It's, um, you know, white people are, white people don't cook. White people can't jump. White people need re to pay reparations. And someone deviates from that and gets dogpiled. Meanwhile, on the other side, it's like, well, you deserve to be paid more money. You deserve grievance 
politics and, and more pork barrel stuff because you've got darker skin and she's like, no, hell no, fuck, just give me an AR-15 and I'll go hunting or something. And they consider this to be an inconceivable worldview. The fact that she does not believe herself to be universally and continuously victimized makes sense when you're the fucking lieutenant governor, by the way. Uh, the fact that, you know, she'd blow your head off if you tried to, you know, do the Klan march thing to her because she believes in Second Amendment, which is something that most Democra Democrats certainly don't. Um, she suddenly, she, it's, she's black in the outset, but she's white, uh, and, she, and she's a Nazi. <laughs> I mean, there are Jewish Nazis, there are black Nazis, there are Mexican Nazis, uh, Eskimo Nazis. Um, at what point do we say that the traditional term has broken down, has overstretched to the point where calling someone a racist is arguably now a, a synonym for calling them diverse? You're saying they're part of the group of people that does not care about race, that does not want to burn books and jackboot down the street telling people what to do. It's almost an inversion. The traditional usage of the term for the jackboot thug with extreme racial uh, issues has been flipped on its head. And now, you know, some of the leading Nazis are like Tario there, who's he's, he's like 50% Cuban, I think it was. Uh, so he's Hispanic, and, and he's not what you would consider, I mean, he doesn't look like a Swede or something ethnically. Um, Winsome Sears, <laughs> Diamond and Silk, Ben Carson. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, and Tim Pool, by the way, he's he's been labeled far right now as well. So if you wander off the Dem plantation, it doesn't even matter what the sub-ideology is at that point. The mere fact that you would criticize the glorious messiah of civilization with its nimbyism and carbon taxes and other stupid proposals and constantly, by the way, stabbing the actual leftoids in the back like on the infrastructure bill that got severed from the pork barrel spending. I'm not even going to bother covering it in the video because it's such a goddamn self satirizing pile of horse shit. Uh, then, then you are far right and a Nazi. Irrespective of race. There are, there are black Jewish Nazis out there. This is something that, I mean, back in the 90s we never learned about all these interesting groups of people. That's about all. Peace out.